right, so this tarps are what I like to call appropriate technology. They're so simple and they, there doesn't really seem much to it, but this is a real game changer in market gardening for a variety of reasons. One we talked about back there and we talked about weed prevention and mitigation. Um, the great thing about a tarp is as far as weeds and, and, the, and, and prepping soil goes, you can use them in two different ways. So right we're standing on right here are some beds that have been shaped. You can kind of see the shape of the bed. So when you've got an old, an old crop that was finished, you can just tarp it and let time do the work. That's what I love about this technology is you, you, it really reduces the amount of work you do. That tarp over there, so they're also a great way to prep new land. So you might have some pasture and you can go run out some silage tarps and leave those there for a few months. Even leave them there for the winter when you pull that off in the spring and we can go pull it off later and take a look and you'll see the ground is that much more friable. One thing about right now, which is super cool, anybody guess what another great reason why these would be good right now in this context of today? Dry. Dry. So we're in, so that this is an awesome thing about these tarps is they allow you to get in the ground earlier. So in climates where you get a lot of win winter precipitation, sometimes like the warmer climates, like in Canada for us on the west coast, the lower mainland is warmer than everywhere else, but it's piss and rain all the time. So people think that they can farm a lot longer because they have a warmer season, but you can't because it's, the soil's always wet. So you can go and tarp an area in the in the fall and then you can pull that tarp off and then you've got dry soil that you can work with right away. Like you could see how difficult it is running those machines in wet soil. So this is one of the biggest advantages to using tarps is that it keeps your soil dry and then you can come in and you don't have to, it's not a mess. And then you can come in, prep your beds and then tarp it back. So let's say right now we were gonna prep up this area and we knew that we had a winter of rain coming. We could open up a segment of it till up our beds, prepare our beds, shape them, and then just cover it back up. Keep those beds ready to go for the, for the next part of the season. So the, the thing that, that I love about these the most is just weed mitigation and prevention over time. That you can keep them in place and what happens is if the soil's kind of wet, like what I'll do is I'll open it up and let's do it right now. Let's, let's open a bit of this right now. This, this will expedite the weeds because it cre if you have moisture in there, it's gonna create a warm and humid environment that will encourage the weed growth. So if you leave a tarp on long enough, the weeds will just, they'll just burn off because they'll suffocate. They'll try to reach for light. They won't get light. But in combination with a, fl with a flame weeder, which we'll look at in the greenhouse, it's a very effective way to have weed-free soil. So you pr you'll, you'll prep up your beds, you'll shape your beds just like we have here. And if you don't have, what I do is if, if there is no rain, I'll actually water the beds. I'll put the sprinkler on them, soak them in real good, tarp it up, depending on the time of the year. It, you know, it could be, if it's, if it's a warmer time of year, it might be two weeks and you'll have tons of weed germination. You'll take this off and you'll see all these little baby weeds like this. You can come in with the flame weeder, burn those off really quick, and then you can plant right away. But if you want to let time do the work, you just leave the tarp on for longer. So this really is, is part of it. It's kind of a three-fold system with, uh, with low till or no till, using a tarp and a flame weeder. Those three things in combination really, really reduces your weed pressure to the point where if you do it right, you won't have, weeds won't be an issue for you. And so you can see here, Ray's got two different, uh, we've got two different types of tarps in a way. We've got the tarp, the silage tarp, which you guys, I think Farmer's Friend, you guys sell on these now, right, Jonathan? Yeah. So th these, are, these are the most ideal tarp to use because they're long, and they're, they're lightweight, they're easy to move around. And, um, but the landscape fabric, this was a game changer for me. And um, I started using this a couple years ago, and when I was consulting for Ray, I, I, I started, I got him using it and it's changed the game for them because they were pulling so many weeds all the time. Now they're not doing any. We'll do a demo of, I'll show you guys in the greenhouse later on how I make these, but this is part of that strategy. For us on our farm, we don't have exposed soil anywhere. So if there's a perimeter area like Ray's got here, it's got fabric around it. 
If there's a bed with transplants in it, we're using fabrics. Obviously with direct seeded crops that doesn't work, but uh, we keep the soil covered all the time. So if, if beds are prepped and they're gonna sit bare for a while, we cover them up. Because if you leave these beds like they are now, winter rain comes in, washes away your topsoil, that's erosion. In, in organic farming, we want, bio, we want biology, so we want to maintain our topsoil. So the tarp and the, the, the fabric is all part of that, of keeping that soil structure in place. So this is simple stuff. It's cheap. Um, some people don't like the way it looks because it's plastic, but you know what? When it comes summer and uh, you're not out there pulling weeds, you're going you're gonna to really appreciate it then. Yeah. What about... If I have a bunch of landscape staples, could I use them to pull these guys down? I don't like to staple the tarps. I, I prefer to use row bags. So these, you just get these things, fill them with sand or river rock or gravel. I, I prefer row bags. Um, I staple my, my fabrics, but um, I, I think row bags are better for this. And if you get a harsh wind that comes in, it'll just tear up this tarp anyways. You want to preserve these because you want to, you know, use them and move them back and forth all the time. and. Yeah, and, and, um, I want to go ahead and add one practical context to this, like down here, so we're able to get crops in the south earlier. Um, so what I did is like early February, we have like this week of dry weather, which is pretty typical in, in this area. And then it just starts raining again in late February. So I was able to work the ground, got the beds prepped, and then I covered it. And then in early March, whenever I had, you know, kale ready to go, I just, you know, Uncovered, Uncovered it and just planted it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and I, so I have a question with that um, I started using <coughs> tarps this fall and my worry about using them in the spring is is it going to get hot enough? Underneath that tarp how long do you have to leave right. it in the spring to get it to do it? So, 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 so the point in the spring is not for weeds it's for keeping your soil dry right. so you can keep that planting so you schedule. Can pull it, and you're your not, soil you're will not warm up held back. If it's dry. It, it will, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll stay colder longer yeah. as well. And so, and so the key is obviously brand new tarps is best because, you know, there's holes and cows get out and they, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, it, it's very, you know, a lot of, um, you know, well, we've always struggled with getting our crops in on time in the spring because of rain. This. Man, we just every week it was on schedule, never missed a day. It was yeah. it was a game changer. And, and, a, and a, strat, a strategy with the tarps is if you have permanent blocks on your farm. So I was just at JM Portier's new farm called Le Ferme de Quatre Temps. It's a massive, amazing market garden, and they have the farm divided up into ten bed blocks. So they have two tar tarps on each side. <coughs> so they just roll them up and they just leave them on the side. So you have these permanent tarps that are just there. So whenever a group of beds are done, you just pull the tarps over. So you're not having to move tarps back and forth. You just leave them at the blocks. You just kind of compact them up and keep them on there on the sides. And, and for, so if we know that these beds are actually, prepped, we're gonna seed direct seed carrots next week in, in these four beds. Mm. And so that's kind of why, why we want to keep it dry. Um, we're experimenting for really early, early carrots and hoping that they'll germinate before any of the weeds will. So, a, so. A, a, a carrot strategy, if you have really weedy soil, would be to prep your beds, have the soil be wet, cover it up. That'll encourage any weeds like we saw in there. Pull, so what Ray might do when he does this is, well this is what I would do, is I'd pull that tarp off, flame it right away, so you get the double weed kill action with the tarp with time, and then the flame weeder plant your carrots, and then six, seven days later, come back and flame it again on yeah. top of the carrots. Mm -hmm. You can throw a handful of radish seeds somewhere, and when the radishes the radish make, germinate you know, you two or three days faster than carrots, well, more than that at this time of year, yeah. but that's that's the idea there. Yep. You, you can really reduce your weed pressure, because gr anybody who's grown carrots in weedy soil knows that it sucks. If you, if you get a, cr a bunch of weeds coming through, that yeah. those carrots Forget are right it. off. Just Forget about it. Just mow, mow it in. Yeah, just, just start plant over. again. Yeah. What I often do if that happens is if I, if I and I've, I've done this a few times where I've screwed it up or you know somehow the timing got mixed up, weeds didn't germinate, you planted your carrots, carrots came up looking okay but then in a week later huge crop of weeds. I just come in and flame the whole thing and start again. Flame the carrots, flame the weeds and just plant right again. Mm -hmm. Adam, have you had any experience with that tine weeder with carrots? 
When those carrots come up, they're about this big, right? So we've got the tine weeding rakes that we, we sell now at $30, okay? okay? Um, there's a 21-inch model, all right? Carrots are this tall, um, and, and a lot of other crops, you know, are at that stage. You can run right over them with that um, blindly, right? Okay. The carrots are already got a really long tap root. They're not going to come out, and some of them you're going to cover up even, mm. but they'll come through, okay? So it's really, really fast, really efficient. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so again, wow. if you're not convinced, <laughs> buy the right yeah. stuff. I'm buying two of these today. There you go. There you go. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> Step right up. Step, Step right, right on up. up. So we want to go. I think we're ready. With the harvester. Or what, are uh, we what we're going to do next? next? Yeah. We're going to we're going to do um, the um, the furrower that, that Adam has because we're going to walk okay. right past it. We forgot to add it. Okay. And then we'll do the harvester. Okay.